Hey there friends, I hope that you are having a terrific Thor's Day. It's one of my favorite days of the week because I get to say it's Thor's Day. I just finished recording our Art Du Jour uh, video for Thor's Day, May the 17th. <laughs> I hope you guys will tune in to that little series that I have going on at YouTube. It is all about DIY and use what you have. Uh, the things that come to you on a daily basis will be made into an art project. So that's what we've been working on this week. I've got a couple of new journals to go into the shop today. This beautiful purple babel, baby and an indigo blue. I have been, I know I've shown you guys my planner and how I've been working in it. One of the things that I want to do with this planner is to kind of get a schedule for balancing my house. I used to be really, really, really good at this. Um, I kept a Bagua map and I was able to, um, to balance my house in an effective way. Now I've gotten really far away from that as my work changed in December of last year so I have a little project. I've already pulled my Bagua map and I have a little project going with that to kind of clear the energy in, in my house. I've started with cleaning a lot of corners and you know corners are places where stagnant energy can build up so I've cleaned my corners and I've smudged them with a feather and just a little bit of incense so I should get better I should feel my energy starting to to lift in the house but the Bagua map is also about colors and when I was working with these two colors I thought gosh you know that the uh, abundance and prosperity corner of your house which is the left back corner um, is really does respond to anything red or purple in that corner um, Skills, knowledge, peace, self-growth uh, responds to the color blue. And, you know, we've just got a purple one here and we've got a blue one here. Um, purple is abundance and prosperity. Blue is skills and knowledge and self-growth. They uh, represent um, the, um, the elements of of water, of course, and of fire because uh, purple is derived from a red color. Let's take a look inside these journals. These are, I have taken some things away. I have added some things. So you're going to see some different things in, in these journals. And I'm continuing to kind of um, clean out some of the elements that we've used before simply because I don't have very many of them and I'm using them in the new Midori style junk journals that I'm making that should appear in the shop next week. This purple uh, purple journal is, is uh, finished off with crystal beads, glass beads, check beads, and just a few little sweet little plastic beads right there in the middle. They just went so nicely with this color that I thought I would go ahead and include them. We start out with a book plate for you, a little kitty cat on some books. We've done away with the story element in the story book. If you want a story book, just let me know and I'll be happy to tuck one in for you. But I felt like we had we had done that element for a long time and I felt like we just, you know, we needed a change and, and we should probably just um, kind of not use it right now and maybe it might make an appearance. Maybe it might come back as some different sort of prompt like the word art or the word dream instead of the word story. This is a skinny book for you guys. The first element still deals with, you know, things that are pretty, pretty papers. Um, 
I call this the art studio. It has a lot of stuff in it for you to craft with. This is a little ad for Downton Abbey that came from a craft magazine. I thought that was totally beautiful. Inspiration. Inspiration in color. Inspiration in style. Inspiration in illustrations. That is what this little signature is all about. This is a great little piece, y'all. It came from a 1950s-ish little book about how to make your packages beautiful. My mother-in-law was the queen at making Christmas package or any package. Birthday package didn't matter. It looked like it was packaged at an upscale department store. When she started her Christmas wrapping, the house looked like Hallmark blew up. It was ribbons, you know, fancy little cording, beautiful papers, beautiful ribbons, beautiful bows. It was just like, oh my gosh, you did not want to open it. But anyway, it just it reminded me of her and the care and passion and sweetness that she always took with her with her packages, no matter what holiday it was. This is our paper element where we have some... Uh, some canvas element for you. This is a little envelope with uh, with things to play with. Some fabric scraps, some painty paper scraps. I think there's some inky paper scraps in here. All kinds of things for you to play with. A little bit of tracing paper and we have that transparency that I thought was so funny that reminds me of it really reminds me of Mrs. Trawick in the 11th grade, who was my geometry teacher, who took to sneezing, um, usually in the middle of the class. And when Mrs. Trawick started to sneeze, it was going to be a 15-minute break. So you just might as well just put down your pencil and just take a little rest, because it was going to go on and on and on. But she used, you know, those transparencies as she was teaching us geometry. Also in this signature, I'm going to give you a little bit of bling. And this is a 140-pound watercolor paper to play with. It is so much fun to play with watercolor paper. I did not know for a really long time that you have to wet watercolor paper before you watercolor on it. Just an FYI, y'all. <laughs> you have to like spray it with a bottle or something. You have to get it wet uh, before you can play with it. Some gorgeous stickers that are just glittery and fun. A very pretty napkin for you guys. A prima flower. A wonderful little journaling card. Um, just elements that you can use to craft something gorgeous. This is from a Take 5 art project that I did. Another little journaling card for you. This pocket is chock full of um, ATCs. This is an ATC that I made. This is a blank for you right here. These are some... <laughs> awesome tags that Kathy made for us. I love it. It says story on it. And a vintage playing card as well. Another Kathy tag that I just love it. I just love it. That's all I got to say about it. I am having a bit of an issue with this washi tape on this particular paper. This is, I'm recycling a calendar and the paper is almost like a vinyl. So if you get this journal, y'all, just be mindful that it, it it's showing a little bit. I don't want to glue it because then you can't reuse it. But you might have to just kind of press it down every now and again. Our next section is old text and cards. Uh, I put in a little fabric element for you. This is the pen element with John Steinbeck and... Um, who else was on that? Ernest Hemingway, uh, you know, the, the, the fabric that we were using to, uh, to cover some journals. A piece of, this is super cool. It's a whole page from a 1958 dictionary. I thought that was just super, super neat right there. Um, this is from a law dictionary. It's called the Law Oh gosh, it was from 1968. I'll have to to I'll have to pull that information. I don't remember exactly what it was called. Very, very cool. I love all that lawyer e stuff. Would not want to be a lawyer. Don't know how people are lawyers, but you know, if you need one, it's good to have one. 
French Dictionary for you. I have new papers from Nancy. I got a random box last week and it was from Kathy's friend Nancy and she said, I've heard about you. I've heard about what you do and I want to support you and here's some stuff and do you need more? And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was overwhelmed, you guys. Paper is just incredible. I, I just feel so blessed so many times that, you know, I'll go to my door and uh, our angel sent a box today and it was exactly when I was beating this and I thought, geez, this is going to be kind of hard to match up. And then she sent these beautiful beads. It's just like, it's so, so serendipity. I can't explain it. It's magic to me. It's total magic. Some sheet music. This this was Mary Ann Springer's sheet music. A sweet uh, waxed bag. I want to find out about the history of waxed bags. I thought this one was really incredible. This is a, a postcard from Acadia National Park, uh, 1992. It's from Susan. It's very neat. Salvaged handwriting there. A receipt from 1885. These two papers, the, the uh, Three Musketeers written in French, is 1876. This is Swedish, and it is 1836. Beautiful paper, beautiful print. It's just remarkable. This is from the Nielsen Ephemera, A Valentine for Someone I Loved, and it is signed Kath, 1948. A little baby birth announcement. I love this one because it says, A little fellow at your house, what a feather in your hat. And this is from Minnie and Muriel. I love a vintage greeting card. Doesn't it tell you a story? Don't you wonder? You know, it, it's very... Um, to me, it's a flashback. It's a look back into someone's life because it was someone's birthday. They got that card. They got it in 1948. You know, what was happening in 1948? What was happening in their lives? I, I love thinking about things like that. This is some paper for you to have fun with. This was gleaned from an old calendar. This was gleaned from an old calendar. This is a round tag that I thought was really very unique and fun to play with. I love Snoopy. My dad, when I was born, gave me a wind-up Snoopy that I still have, and it still works, and that was 60 years ago. So I had some Snoopy elements, so we're going to put some Snoopy elements in here. We're also going to fix this because it's driving me absolutely crazy. I love the washi tape. Love it, love it. But it is not wanting to stick. So we'll just do that. And then that way, y'all, it will, it will stay in place, but you'll be able to use it. I've got a skinny book for you. This little signature is about home and garden, vintage home and garden. Where is your home? Where is your dream home? Here's a map here so you can kind of plan your dream home. It's good to develop a love for where you are. Um, it's hard to get to another place if you are hating where you are. It's hard to get to that new car if you hate your old car. So you have to develop a love of where you are and what you have in order to progress on up the emotional scale and get to something fabulous. So... Think about your house and what is fabulous about it. And it's also cool to kind of put it into your into your into your thoughts, into your vortex about the things that you would really like to have. I would really like to have. Not, oh my gosh, if I don't get a new car, it's just gonna kill me. I hate my car. You know, that's not the way to get to that car. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, the garden element of our home and garden. Beautiful clematis. Isn't that pretty? That is really gorgeous. Uh, windmills. 
shiny things, things that go round and round. I love anything like that in my yard. I had my first hummingbird yesterday. I was so excited. Um, I think I told you guys about cleaning a house uh, in November and I found a hummingbird feeder and I put it up yesterday and put the hummingbird feeder food in it and I had my first little visitor and he was cool or she was cool. I don't know what he or she was. Might have been a she, might have been a he. I do not know. Um, this is 1984-1988 Colonial Homes magazines that we have going here. Here are some house plans. I'm kind of... I kind of gravitate to that tiny home thing. You know, my dream home really, it might even be a home on wheels. It might even be an RV because then that way you can always take your dogs with you. And I love my doggies and I like, I would love to be able to take them to like state parks and things like that in an RV. I think that would be kind of fun to kind of live in an RV. I don't know. Have you ever done it? It might be fun. I do know a band called Pickled Holler that uh, they play down in Georgia. They're excellent if you want to check them out, Pickled Holler. And they um, they have started going to all the festivals in an RV. So they 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 kind of uh, they camp in their RV. Isn't that cool? Pretty, pretty stickers for you. Vintage playing cards. More of this excellent garden fodder that you can just fall in love with. I fell in love with it. Beautiful patio furniture. It's great to have an outdoor area. My, I was very, very, very lucky. My friend Richie came over and, uh, and repaired my deck for me. I, I had some boards coming up, so I'm very appreciative to Richie uh, for doing that and appreciative that I had the funds to do that, which was awesome because it was not going to be fun to walk out there and fall through the deck. Um, the next signature is Grandma's Kitchen, and it is recipes and advertising from uh, from about 1948 through the 50s. Uh, you know, we might have had a crazy grandma, and she might have made some bubbly brew. I really do not know why this dropped in here, but it did, so I just left it. <laughs> um, we have some super keen recipes from the 50s typed that I think um, Carol, Carol or Kathy gave me these, gave us these, uh, and, and put them on some scrapbook paper. Carol or Kathy, I can't remember y'all. I'm sorry, but I love them. I love them. I love them. I think they're so cool. And so we've got a skinny book in here for you in case you want to uh, write, an, write your own recipe. Or what do you remember about Grandma's house? I'll tell you what I remember about my Grandma's house. I remember um, that she had a red enamel table and that we have bunks you know there were bunks built into uh to the side of the house and on the wall you know so it was like a l-shaped bench for the children um and only fancy people got to sit in the chairs there were only four chairs i remember that food on that table on sundays and thinking there is like no way that food is going to feed this crowd. You know, my uncles would bring uh, home people with them. My aunties would bring home people with them. And it was like, I don't know how this is going to happen. It was a loaves and fish thing, y'all. Uh, you know, it, it was like a three-pound roast was going to feed 12 people. It, it, And everybody went home with leftovers. I mean, everybody went home with a plate of food. How does that happen? And dessert. It was phenomenal. It was loaves and fishes at, on Park Drive in Belmont, North Carolina. <laughs> I've got some sweet little recipes for you. Uh, this is, there's a, a item in here from 1953. It's 500 salad recipes. I love those books. There's a Metropolitan Life um, I think the Metropolitan Life is, oh, this is, um, 
uh, gourmet garden right here. I think this might be the Metropolitan Life section here. A scotch broth, green bean salad bowl, green salad bowl with cottage cheese. It just goes on and on and on. It made me think about my grandma's house and uh, you know the things that I really loved that my grandma cooked. My grandma cooked um, sauerkraut dumplings. Now I'm a big sauerkraut fan. I love love sauerkraut. Um, but she would do the the this. She would put sauerkraut in a pot and put a bit of pork broth on there, and then she would make dumplings, and they were just really. <laughs> to die for. They truly were. I remember being so excited when I would walk in her house and I would smell sauerkraut. Uh, she also let me eat maraschino cherries and olives from her refrigerator. Now that was quite fancy when I was growing up. We didn't have things like that in my house. Um, a, a handmade feather for you. These, these are the paper feathers that I did, and this is the very last one. Umbrella guy over here. We have a little bit of fashion and fabrics. This is from a bead book. Cronk is snoring, y'all. Sorry. Um, these are pattern instructions about how to make a dolman sleeve. Uh, wedding dresses and bridesmaid dresses. Thought those were really pretty. I guess everybody's going to watch the royal wedding on Saturday. Since I don't have a festival, I get to to do that. I don't know what you think about the royals, but um, I think they're people. And I think that they're getting married because they love each other. And I think it's sweet. We've got some fabric elements in here for you to play with. A little bit of that peacock fabric that we're so fond of. And a floral pattern here. Some awesome butterflies here. So you can clip those out and decoupage them to something else if you want. And I love this Emma, Emma Post Barber's um, instructions about how to make bags. These bags are absolutely extraordinary. Hard to believe somebody actually can do something like that. A sweet little butterfly sticker for you and some, this, this is like a, I can't even describe this stuff. I know it's border strip, but it's like a filigree, lacy-ish border strip. It's really, really pretty. So I will have um, Miss Purple ready to go into the shop a little bit later on tonight. Let's move to Indigo Blue. Indigo Blue is all completed with glass beads. I love the way the speed strand looks. I love the color of this book. There's just something very, um, very intriguing about it. I, I just really do, really love, love, love the color. So let's take a look inside. Again, we're starting with our kitty cat book plate. I really do love that. Skipping the story element, the filigree border strip right here a skinny book for you to play with some inspiration you know colors birds children this is an explanation of the color blue and how you are a blue person or you're a green person or you're a gold person uh there are i think there's probably maybe um you know, surveys on lawn that have maybe a color survey. Maybe you could take a color survey and discover what color person you are. You know, whether you gravitate to blue or green or that's your personality. Things like that just interest me. This is from the uh, How to Make a Pretty Package catalog. This is pom-poms and variations. Love things like that. One of my first jobs was at a a pharmacy and we had a serious wrapping station y'all um, and we had a bow maker and the whole thing so I learned about making bows and making packages pretty way early on and then I married my husband and it's like I said a while ago you know his mom was the queen of making <laughs> making stuff look so so pretty we've got a lot of pretty papers for you to play with some tissue papers um, uh, actual tissue 
uh, bling elements right here, the 140 pound watercolor paper right here for you to play with, some tracing paper, canvas paper, all kinds of fun paper for you to to um, to play with and make something with. Got a pretty prim of prima flower. That would look really pretty on here. I, I just noticed that those pinks are very, very similar. Stickers to have fun with. A pocket of elements for you to play with. This is fabric and cording and things like that. Some stickers. A beautiful little card from Kathy that says sprinkle laughter. And this is an ATC so you'll kind of understand about the size of ATCs and how they work. Again we're having um, issues with this tape on this vinyl type of page. So I'm just going to stick some stick a paper clip right here for you. The next signature of course is old texts and cards, dictionary page, legal page, French dictionary, a little bit of Alice in Wonderland, some of the beautiful Emily Dickinson poems. This is from a book called Unto the Hills. The book that I said is not very PC, but the paper is gorgeous and the print is gorgeous. A bit of Inspector Poirot, because we always need some Poirot to sort things out for us. This is a receipt from 19... Mm, I think this is 1865, y'all. I think. Um, the, the handwriting is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. We've got the 1876 um, Three Musketeers written in French, 1836 Swedish text, a vintage card for you. I am crazy about that little that little Christmas card. Fast as a rocket, this comes to say Merry Christmas to you today, and it's from Johnny. I think it's so cool. I love anything sci-fi. Uh, I will watch those crazy like 1955 sci-fi movies until my eyes would pop out of my head y'all. Um, Forbidden Planet. I love Forbidden Planet. That's one of my very favorite ones. This card is signed Esther 1964. Look at these new papers. Man aren't they just gorgeous. Good grief. It's like the tip of the iceberg y'all. I, I Nancy really blessed us. She really sent us some sweet sweet things. Uh, this is a postcard. It's got an owl on it. I love him. I think he's so cute. This is our home and garden section. Another card that Kathy made that says simplify on it. 1984-1985 Colonial Homes Magazine. A house plan for you. We talked about, you know, many homes. Could you live in one of those tiny homes? I think I could. I'm a five foot hundred pound person um, but my fella is like six four so I think he might have trouble in a tiny home this is a sticker that I thought would go great with this um, with this paper right here this paper of course you can pull it out fill it with notebook paper or fill it with uh, copier paper or whatever kind of paper you want staple it together or do like a stab binding on it and have you a little dream journal about your favorite home or what you think your dream home might be like. I was thinking about favorite homes and I, you know, I've, I've been a traveling girl for the past 25 years, but I've lived in this house for 10 years and um, I think that's the longest that I've lived anywhere in quite some time. Um, but favorite homes, you know, I think that favorite homes are something to think about. It's good to recapitulate and think about the places that you loved and the, the places that loved you back, isn't it? Because that's kind of, that is the idea of home. I love this napkin. It says Cafe Olay. So that's a full-size napkin for you to play with right there. We are into our grandma's kitchen. 
What's your story about your grandma's kitchen? What did you like about it? What were things that she made just for you, maybe? Um, I think my grandma really did make that sauerkraut dumplings for me. She made a killer chocolate cake as well. 250 refrigerator desserts. This is from 1953. Quick dishes for the woman in a hurry. I love the illustration. She's like all dressed up, got a hat on, but she's got her apron on and she's either putting something in the oven or pulling something from the oven. It's <laughs> really, really cute. Uh, gourmet Garden Magazine. This is a picnic salad bowl recipe. I was telling my mom about this book today and I was like, Mama, all of the pictures are black and white. She said, well, that must look appetizing. <laughs> I was like, no, not really. It doesn't look appetizing at all. It's like a black and white photograph of food. Um, I've got a, uh, these are post-it notes, the Kool-Aid guy. And it's like that witch's bubbly brew just kept wanting to be in here. Um, my grandma didn't make popcorn, but my dad did. My dad would make popcorn on Friday nights. He would also make like one of those Chef Boyardee pizzas. And he would put bacon on it. And it was the best pizza I believe I've ever put in my mouth. And we would stay up late and watch horror movies and sci-fi movies. And that's... That's really, you know, a very sweet memory of my daddy. Uh, you might have some popcorn memories of your own about being at, you know, at a theater or hanging out at home and watching movies with uh, someone special. It's a sweet memory that I have. I love these old grannies. They are funny. Look at them. And I thought it would be fun to put a thought sticky note down there because what are they thinking they are some wild grannies right there. This is our fashion section, and I put you guys some dress forms right here. These are fabric. Um, this is a piece of fabric that we've worked with before. It's very pretty, very kind of steampunk-ish. Some fabric elements. A page from the bead book. This is, uh, it's called the Elizabeth, this beaded purse. I'm just amazed at things like that. A little bit of crochet for you. That might be tatting or lace making. I'm not sure. I wish I understood things like that. I had my lunch with uh, public TV today, and there was a lady on there sewing, and I was confused the entire time I was watching it. But I made myself watch it so I could appreciate the artistry of people putting clothing together like that. We've got our little umbrella man, and I think his name is Irving, y'all, because that's what's really apparent on him. We are at the end of this little book. We've got another filigree border strip for you. Some super shiny gold papers. A bit of um, adhesive lace. And an also another fabric element right here. I will have these two journals in the shop a little later on tonight. I really, really, really appreciate you guys supporting my Etsy shop. It means the world to me to be able to create fun things for you and, um, and have them fly out of my store and into your house. Thank you guys for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.